Black Hammer Justice League Hammer of Justice Issue 2 sees Bruce drive the farm's beat up old truck around the deserted town, knowing the picturesque landscape is all just a mask. For 10 years Bruce has been patrolling the streets and wonders why he's the only one in the town asking questions, especially since Clark seems to have given up. Soon the local sheriff pulls him over, telling Bruce he's been told before he's not allowed to be conducting his own patrols, since he's not a deputy and he's got no right to harass the locals. Bruce agrees to go home, warning Warning the sheriff to keep his eyes open since it's only a matter of time before chaos breaks out. At Blackhammer Farm, Clark is working when Bruce arrives back, confronting Bruce about patrolling since he heard from the sheriff. He wonders what exactly he's keeping an eye on since there's no crime in town at all and he needs to give it up, but Bruce won't become like Clark. As Bruce goes inside, Clark looks at some of the pictures he has of him and Lois, knowing he has lost more than most, but he's not giving up on her. Elsewhere, Abraham and the others are confronted by by Starro and its infected soldiers in the streets of Metropolis. Gale tells Dragonfly to cast some spells on it and notices that whenever she tries to swear, her words become censored. Suddenly she is hit by one of the Starro parasites as Barbalian and Abraham fight the soldiers. Abraham tells him that they need to work together just like the old days as Gale is rescued by the alien. Just as Abraham is about to be infected, Martian Manhunter, Hawkgirl and Aquaman arrive and stop the parasite from infecting him. The heroes quickly take down Starro and his parasites before kindly asking what Abraham and the others have done with the rest of the Justice League. Barbalian doesn't think Manhunter is actually a real Martian, since everyone knows Martians are red, while Gale hits on Arthur. Abraham tries to understand what's happening as Hawkgirl threatens to beat his mustache off his face if he doesn't tell them where their friends are. In space, Colonel Weird is confronted by the Green Lantern Corps and Jon Stewart, who demands to know his involvement with the disappearance of the Justice League. Suddenly, Randall is teleported away by his powers to Bizarro World, where he is confronted by Bizarro and warped versions of Abraham, Barbalian, and the others, who have suddenly just appeared on this world. Jon Stewart suddenly arrives, learning Randall was teleported to the nearest sentient planet in hopes to find answers. Jon says that he tracked his energy signature, trapping the Colonel in a construct and learning who he is. Randall, however, easily slips out of the construct, telling Jon that they are not enemies. Jon isn't so sure, saying Randall's friends seem to be the cause of his friend's disappearance, but Randall says that they are not, and there was a stranger who is the cause of this, and he needs to show John, and luckily thanks to his ring, he can accompany Weird through the portals. Stepping through the portal doorway, they enter a strange dimension called the Parazone, which allows access to everywhere and when. Randall shows John the strange man who came to them on the farm and who also approached the Justice League. John knows this man is their prime suspect now and they need to find out where he took their friends. Randall begins repeating himself, apologizing to John since it's hard for him to keep track of everything that has happened or will happen because of his powers. John wonders what their first step is and Randall says that he sees what to do next. Next, heading through a doorway and into the past. On the farm, Cyborg is resting as Diana comes in to see him. He stops the TV static he was using to meditate as Diana joins him on the couch, telling him he needs to get outside and can't stay locked up in the farmhouse forever. Victor wonders what he will even do outside since no one is allowed to see him. He's also trapped in his body since there is no internet so he can't connect to anything. Diana knows his feelings all too well because she doesn't like having to teach history to fourth graders, and she's a warrior and something like this is a slow death for her, but she knows Victor can't stay cooped up inside. Victor tells Diana about a crazy dream he had where they were still in Metropolis and none of this actually ever happened. Diana thinks that's not too crazy and she wishes the last 10 years never happened, but most of all, she wished that Barry Allen didn't sacrifice himself for the rest of them. Black Hammer Justice League Hammer of Justice Issue 2 continued the mystery of what exactly happened to the heroes of the DC Universe and the Black Hammer farm. But for me, it didn't really progress the story all that much. It was cool seeing John team with Colonel Weird to locate the one behind all of this, but it should have been a little bit more about the villain of the story, since he didn't actually even appear in this issue, and we still don't know really anything about him. I'm looking forward to next issue though, thanks to the big cliffhanger with apparently Barry dying somehow, as well as the character dynamics that will come through with the DC heroes interacting with Abraham, Gale, and all those other Black Hammer heroes. I'm going to give this issue a 7.5 out of 10.